Alrighty guys, so now the next thing I'm going to do is put on my oil pump. That is the heart of this engine. That is what makes the oil flow. Uh, it's just like the heart in our body that pumps the blood throughout our vessel and make us live. Uh, this is the same thing for the engine. The oil pump makes the engine basically live. So what I'm gonna do first is pull out my factory oil pump. I got this from GM. Like I said, all the part numbers will be listed in the description below and I'll leave an Amazon link for where I purchased these parts. Way, way cheaper than the dealer, trust me. I'm talking about a lot of dollars cheaper. And um, the first thing I'm going to do is put in some uh, motor oil into the uh, pump and then turn it and then put it in. The reason why I'm doing that is I don't want this to run dry um, even though the oil will still go to it. I want it to, to already have some oil in it. So basically primed if you will, like some filters. Um, so you can use in break-in motor oil. Uh, but I'm I don't really have braking motor oil. I'm gonna actually use the oil that I typically put in this truck Which is 5w30 synthetic in this motor. So that's what I'm gonna use for this All right, so now that there's oil in this vessel, we're going to put it into our engine We line up our oil pump after priming it with some oil First, we thread in all four of our oil pump bolts. Then, we torque each bolt in a crisscross pattern to 18 foot-pounds. Look at this beauty, guys. Look how beautiful this is. All the pistons are in. Right now, I got a top dead. Look how clean this block got. So clean, it's not even funny. So this is all the time that I have for the block. Why? Because I'm still waiting on some parts and tomorrow I should be getting them. So in the meantime, I'm actually going to prep some of the uh, parts that we're going to reuse, such as the oil pan, whatnot. If you remember from one of the last episodes, the first, the uh, fourth teardown, the teardown video, um, the oil pan was filled with sludge, so we are going to be cleaning that. If you guys want to stay tuned and watch me clean some parts, be my guest. I'm going to film it anyway. If not, thank you for watching the beginning of the rebuild video. Um, I hope you guys do stay and watch it, though, because watch time is important to me. And... Um, yeah, it allows me to know that what I'm doing is a good thing. So let's get started on cleaning those parts. See you in a few. Look how crazy that sludge is. So what we're going to do is remove these four bolts, which is going to give me access to the sludge in that pan, in the underpan, so I can clean it out um, and clean up all of this. So let's just get started. Plus, this was leaking, so we're finally going to be able to address that. We remove our oil baffle pan, and then we pop off the rivet holding our gasket on. That is terrible. Terrible. Alrighty, so I just want to take one big quick moment to say, guys, change your oil, man. This is from negligence. This is from not changing your oil, burning cheap gas, using cheap oil, you know, like I said, not changing it on time. That's the result of what's going to happen to your engine. That is basically like a clogged artery for those of you who are in medical school um, or just have common sense. That's like a clogged artery. And... 
that's gonna go through the engine and cycle and go up in the oil pump and clog lifters and this is how you damage engines this is how you end up having to do rebuilds this is technically like what's gonna happen to yours if you don't change the oil and you're gonna end up having to do a breakdown like this it's fun and cool to do when you know what you're doing but it's not cheap and also if you don't know what you're doing and you have to pay someone to do this then you might as well just buy a new vehicle because you will be out of luck so I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this soak for a little bit and then I'm gonna go over to my rocker arms and lifters that were soaking in that same gas that I'm using right now and I'm gonna clean those up in the meantime these push rods have been soaking for some time so I thoroughly wipe them dry so now that I got it all cleaned I'm gonna dump some diesel fuel on them and let them soak until I'm ready to use them uh, I'm gonna do that to the rocker arms and the push rods and uh, that should be it Alrighty guys, so it's the very next day and uh, we had a little mishap that happened. So when I was torquing down the main cap bearing bolts, uh, I did not realize that my torque wrench was actually broken. So it wasn't giving me the right torque and it kept turning and turning and turning and you guessed it, it broke. But I got lucky. It did not break where there was a piece left in the block that I had to drill out. Nothing like that. It actually came out in one whole piece and I was able to find another bolt and it came out in one whole piece and uh, then it broke in my hand. So I got completely lucky with that. Someone is watching over me and I am grateful for that. So that kind of delayed the build a little bit. But this morning I went out and I went to the Chevy dealership because I ordered one of the bolts last night and they got the wrong one for me. So I ended up having to drive 30 minutes to another dealership and I finally got the right main cap bearing bolt. And I'm not using that torque wrench anymore. I'm using a new torque wrench. So with that being said, let me show you something. Here's a torque wrench, okay? Usually when you're ready to torque something down, you know, you spin this loose and you turn this to the desired torque you want. Then you tighten this, you torque your bolt down. And typically some people will just throw it back in the drawer, leave it, that's it, it's done. That's what I did. That's the wrong way to do things. When you're done with this, loosen it back and turn it all the way down. Leave it loose. That's how you maintain your torque wrench and you do not have an issue with this. I'll make a completely separate video on torque wrenches, the importance of them and why and how you should maintain them. So let's get started back with the video. Woo! Like I said, loosen it because I'm done with it for now. Before installing my oil splash pan, I thoroughly scrub off all the dirt. I install my splash shield as well as my oil pickup tube with a newly installed o-ring. We torque our shield at 15 foot pounds. Now I focus my attention on the oil pan. I remove my oil filter and then I remove this old, not sure what it's called, oil stopper. I remove the old gasket and clean the area. I move my attention to the front cover and I use a pry bar to carefully remove the old front seal. Using the new seal I use a thin layer of RTV to really give me a shore seal.
Using a mallet allows me to install my seal flush against my cover. There is a specific alignment for this cover. I use my crank to help line up the front cover. I torque my bolts down to 18 foot-pounds. 